Sultan of Sokoto Sa'ad Abubakar III has called on security agencies to be more proactive in the fight against terrorists and bandits. The paramount ruler of Sokoto Caliphate and spiritual head of Muslims in Nigeria said the effort to rein in the terrorists is being made more difficult because they are always a step ahead in, when compared to the authorities. He questioned the attitude of government officials who are in the habit of only condemning the killings when they are perpetrated and called for a more robust and committed approach from the Chinubu administration on the issue of tackling insecurity. Well, Arise News Analyst Dayo Shibwale joins us now to examine Sultan Abubakar's comments. Good afternoon, Mr. Shibwale. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, the level of coordination that we're seeing from these terrorists is, is, is top-notch. But it seems that that's lacking when it comes to what we're seeing, the cohesion with the, amongst the security agencies, according to what analysts are saying. I would like to know your take. Yeah, the level of uh, sophistication on the part of the terrorists is uh, disastrous, mm. totally disastrous. And that was what uh, the sultan, the good sultan, I will call him, yeah. was saying. That the, the, the terrorists, we call them bandits and kidnappers. I will elaborate further on that later. Uh, he said they always a step ahead. And he asked some important rhetorical questions. He said, why, why are we, our leaders, always trying to console people after the event? Why can't they prevent the event? Then he asked, what happened to our intelligence uh, gathering system? You have that, you see, something needs to be done. And he said a lot of things. I hope I can recollect most of them. Essentially, that um, the people are literally fed up. He did not talk of social contract. But he said, people want a change. And because things are not right. And when things are not right, anything can happen. That is a very ominous warning. And he, he went on to dwell on his other, I mean, how can I even dwell on his former utterances on this issue? He highlighted about two years ago that Boko Haram has metamorphosed from uh, its initial uh, religious coloration to, to now kidnapping people and banditry. And he said their philosophy, which is known to Western education, is steeped, steeped in kidnapping and taking people hostage. There was a case in Kaduna where you know, a family paid 10 million and they didn't release the victim. 10 million naira and uh, two brand new motorcycles. You see, they are using the money to amass technology. And that is why they seem to be ahead of our troops. I'm happy the, the Sultan highlighted that he's both a religious leader and a traditional leader. And he once said, he lamented about the tragedy, that they are killing more people in the north and that the north is the most dangerous place to live in Nigeria. And then he said, maybe because the media was not covering the event enough because it's not happening in the south. I don't think I can say that now, because there's no newspaper, news outlet you will see that you will not see on a daily basis of killings in the killing fields of the northern part of Nigeria. But you see, I was afraid of the religious connotation. I showed my fears yesterday, if you remember that time. But I'm happy he has come out now to say that it is not a matter of people setting up Christians fighting Muslims, or even people who have no religion. Yes, he said the problem is leadership. Leadership. But Nigerians must give some confidence to their leaders that they can get them out of the road. They even gave a time frame. You know, you're always in a hurry. Yes. He gave a time frame. <laughs> there may be a few weeks, uh, a few months, but definitely a year. Which, I, which to me, shows the urgency he attaches to him. You see, the Sultan was a military officer himself. And he said, they know 
about intelligence gathering and they know the work of the security agencies. What he said is the security has been politicized. Get me? He has said politicized, and I will I will say uh, you know ethnicized and turn into a sectarian issue. But then we have to sort it out. Because what the Sultan has said is that we must give our leaders time, have confidence in them. But then definitely not more than a year. And it ended again, like I said, that people need change because things are not right. And when things are not right, anything can happen. Let's leave it at that for now. Right. Now, the recurring theme that is being brought up by various people, which uh, the Sultan did highlight, is the issue of intelligence gathering. Right. And I'm glad he also made reference to the incident uh, that took place in Kaduna in mm. uh, Tudumbiri, which, of course, uh, it, when it came down to it, it also came down to lapses in intelligence gathering. In that instance, it was the fact that the intelligence that was shared was not accurate. In this instance, it's still developing. So we're yet to really know what went wrong with regards to intelligence gathering. Mr. Shobowale, where do we go from here? Uh, we know that information data is all we have to solve this issue. And then when you look at what other, pe what other involved and concerned parties say that, well, the information is available. So how do we get to a point, uh, how do we move from a point of our leaders just condemning to them acting to the information that's available to these communities and within the intelligence network as well? That is what the Sultan has pointed out. And he did not say it, but it is my own words now. He says something like, it is their funeral if they do not sort things out. This is clear enough message. He's, uh, he's not asking for a revolution, but he's saying that people, human lives cannot be lost like that. No, in his own case, he said that uh, religiously that we're praying, that they are praying. Uh -huh. But you see, there's a, uh, so a story I read sometime, the middle of a battle, when the chaplain said, praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. I think we have reached that stage now. Yeah. He said, it's a stage where we must stop this terrorism. Some people have suggested the state of emergency in some, you have like to be in the north, but you see, the politics of it will not allow that. You get me? And you see, we all know that the governors have the security vote, but nobody is talking about that. What are they, have they done with their security vote? Every, every time these things happen, it's the governors who do the most hand wringing. You get me? But somebody must be responsible for security in every state, literally. And even national, we know the government, the, uh, the government is the one uh, responsible. But then, you see, look at it. Everybody is talking about intelligence. <clears throat> intelligence is a very, very, that's information. You are in a, a digital information age. I read somewhere in the papers that you know, uh, the, the terrorists have better digital, digital equipment, phones, phones, and things to use to contact themselves and to locate where our troops are. I watched the film almost overnight. Where soldiers were told to limit use of phones, but some of them are phoning. And of course, before they knew it, they located them and they hosted them. So we must learn from anything we can learn from to protect ourselves. But surely, credible intelligence is failing, it's lacking. Because if there's credible intelligence, we'll eliminate our enemies, don't be killing ourselves. And if there's credible, ah, like the Sultan asked, he said, can anybody tell me nobody knew that these attacks were going to come? He asked, he asked the question, he's a military officer. So let the government be up and doing. That is my own. And those in charge of intelligence, I mean, if they are not performing, they should be changed. They should be changed. That is the duty of the service chiefs. Because it is suicidal if you go to attack somebody and you don't have information to fight on, or you, you are given wrong information. That's self-liquidation. Okay. So it is a wake up call, and I'm happy it is uh, coming from a religious leader. You know, we, people used to see, used to say that uh, the, Islam, the terrorists are Islamists, uh, Fulani people. He has debunked that. He says it's mm -hmm. not a matter of that, that it's not even for them. 
In fact, I fear for his safety in the way he has come out to condemn Boko Haram. You get me? So let's leave it at that for well, now. But just before we round up, Mr. Shibuola, I'm just yeah. wondering, um, I, of course, about two weeks ago, December 15 specifically, the Kaduna State Governor, Ubasani, urged the northern governors to develop a common strategy and operational plan to tackle insecurity in the region. While the time we're waiting, you know, we spoke of the timeline based on what the Sultan said, you know, for the, the government, the administration to get things um, in order. While that's, um, we're waiting for that to happen, do you want to see a better, a better um, strategic effort when it comes to the northern governors? It has to be. It has to be better. There must be alternative to people getting killed. You get me? The alternative is to stop people getting killed by any means possible. As long as it is the enemy that is eliminated, not the people that the governors are supposed to. You know, even uh, the governor of the north, the last governor, uh, Rufai, lamented publicly, loudly, that the security people know where the bandits are and that they should go and get them. The Sultan is echoing the same call now. And these are leaders of the north. At last, the Sultan, even a year ago, the Sultan said, it's, it's in the north that they are killing people. That's how you know, he knows what is on the ground. But he's saying that those who are in charge should accept responsibility and effect change so that people are not killed anyhow. And he said, frankly, by bandits and kidnappers. That's the essence of government. It is a call that government should eat because it's a call for security, safety. As political stability at the end of the day. Well said. Uh, Thank you so much. Our rising analyst, Mr. Daishibuala, we appreciate your time here on Newsday. Thank you. Mm -hmm.